In this tips and tricks video, we are going to learn how to create summer straw hats. Let's start with creating an ellipse. You can decide what size your brim should be. Here I want it to be quite big, so I choose 410 to 450. Now, let's adjust some things before we do the construction. Starting with fabric, we want it to be harder, so we can change its physical properties by choosing a preset here. For example, trim hardware. You can further harden this fabric by increasing the value of these parameters. It depends on the kind of material you want to use for your hat. I adjust it to 90. Then I select the pattern piece itself and change its particle distance to 5. I also want the outlines to have as few segment points as possible. So I select these three points, right click, convert to curve points. Before arranging this pattern piece in the 3D window, I prefer to change my gizmo to word coordinate. Preferences, gizmo, word coordinate. And then the fabric view to texture surface, to know which side of the fabric is the right one and which one is the left one. Now I position this pattern piece horizontally and simulate. So it falls on the floor. I also prefer to place it in the center to have a clean project. I select it in 2D and with the gizmo move it to the center. Let's continue with constructing our head and create a flat top out of the brim. Right click, offset as internal line 122 millimeters. This line is for the hole in the brim. Right click and again offset as internal line 127. This line is for the crown top. And now we can simply cut these parts and delete what we don't need. So I select them, cut, and we need only this piece and these two pieces we can delete. Select the crown top and bring it up in 3D with the help of the gizmo. If you wonder if your head fits a head well, you can measure the length of the hole. The standard range of the sizes starts with 54 cm for extra small and goes until 65 cm for XXXL. Here we have around 58 cm, it is approximately size M. Let's add pins around the brim to be sure it keeps its shape later. Pin box, then we need to zoom and double click on the intersection of mesh on the edge. It also makes sense to temporarily freeze these two pattern pieces. Select them, right click, freeze. Before creating the side panel, let's measure how high it should be. I'm looking for the tool Linear Measure Garment. If it's hidden or it's difficult to access the drop down menu, you can simply make your 3D window bigger. Here it is Linear Measure Garment. Now we can measure the distance between one point on the brim and another point on the crown top by clicking on one and another. Here it's approximately 64 millimeters. The length, I measure the length of the hole and of the crown top and take a number in the middle, 570 millimeters. Now we can finally create a rectangle pattern piece. Shortcut S, click 570 millimeters and height. 64. The next step is to sew this pattern piece. I connect it to the crown top and to the brim. Then I close center back. Once we created a sewing connection, we can use superimpose function. Superimpose side. In this case, at first it does not look that correct, but once we simulate, it fixes itself. Let's unfreeze the crown top and continue. We can improve the outcome by adjusting the seam lines angles. This property influences how pattern pieces that are sewing together are folded in relation to each other along the seam line. The angle between the side and the top should be 90 degree. And the angle between the side and the brim should be 270. Let's create a bend. 
At first, I prefer to create an internal line with a tiny offset of 1 mm. In this case, I would like the ribbon to be 30 mm height. Right click on this new line, offset as internal line, 30 mm. Now we can use the trace tool. Shortcut I, then you select all sides, right click, trace as pattern. In this case, I want this ribbon to have a trim on the side and not just to be sewn together at center back. It means I would need to mark where I want it to be. With Select Move tool, I click on this point in 3D and now I can use this blue point in 2D as a reference. Shortcut X to add a point. Right click to access the pop up window. Here we can type the exact distance. 180 mm is close to the blue mark. Then we need to create another point here. The distance is the same, 180 mm. Now we can start sewing. We want the seam of the band to be on this point. It means we need to use 1 to M sewing. Here I work with segment sewing and I hold shift. Don't forget to close the center back. Now let's superimpose over. The next step is to create a bow on the ribbon. The good news are that it's not exactly a bow, but simply a square pattern piece. At first, I create an offset, 30 mm. Then the pattern piece itself. 30 mm to 30 mm and sew its sides to the ribbon. Make sure you use sewing line type turned. And then we can superimpose over. And already on this stage, we can select these pattern pieces and change their particle distance to 5, as well as mesh type to quads. And the next step to apply a fabric to the ribbon. I want to use twill. So I simply drag and drop this fabric. Let's unfreeze this part and actually think about design a bit. So let's imagine that this material, we want to be it to be a wool. We already changed its physical property, so it's a bit hard. And what we can do now is to, for example, add a normal map, one of our standard normal maps, maybe make it stronger, maybe change its color to a darker shade as well as change the color for the cotton twill. In this case we might be ready, but in case of the straw hat it's a bit more complicated. So let me go back and let's work a bit with this material. So again we go here, we don't need this normal map anymore and I just found some images of straw that I'm going to use for this fabric. So I drop one on texture, I generated one for normal map and I also have one for displacement map, but I will decide later if I'm going to use it or not. You can also change color, some parameters here. So at this point I can also hide the pins. And as you might notice, it looks nice, but the straw goes just in one direction, where in the reality it goes round. Here my idea is to create pattern pieces that look like stripes, and sew it here. So we have a straw that goes in right directions. And now I will start to measure these two 
lines to know how uh, long the stripe should be. So these two lines together make it 1,900 and something. Let's just take a half of that, so approximately 960. And now we can create a rectangle, shortcut S, one click, and now we could input width of 960 millimeters and height of 122. It was the offset of the whole of the head. And now we can continue with sewing. One side should be sewn to the outer edge of the head, seam line type turned. And then we create the other sewing connection. And we could connect it to this circle pattern piece, but I would recommend you to actually connect it to the uh, side pattern piece, so this one. And here again, we need to change the fold angle. Here it's 270. And don't forget to close the sides. And before we superimpose this pattern piece, I would recommend you to reduce additional thickness collision to 0 0.1. This way, this pattern piece would be superimposed without this layer of the air in between. It makes sense to deactivate Ctrl J and hide Shift Q the original pattern piece. Then we can superimpose over the stripe. Simulate. As you can see, there is too much fabric close to the head crown. We can solve it by dividing this stripe to several patterns and shorten the part close to the crown. In 3D, we can identify where the length of the stripe is too long and then draw an internal line into D. Right click, cut and sew. It allows us to change the length of the inner stripe. After simulating, we can see if the pattern piece actually fit in its place. You can keep adjusting it and even divide the stripe further. By default, seams have normal maps applied. It makes them to actually look like seams. In the case we don't want a seam to be visible as between these two stripes in this project, we need to select this seam and change its normal map intensity to zero or simply delete it. Now we should go through a similar process with a crown top. So we start with deactivating and hiding the pattern piece. Then measuring its length, so it's around 500. And then we can create a rectangle in the length that is a bit shorter, so I will go for 450. And the height, for example, 20 millimeters. We can adjust it later. Now let's sew this stripe directly to the crown. And don't forget that the angle between them should be 90 degrees and close the side seam. Now we can select the stripe and the top and change the additional thickness collision to 0 0.1 to get rid of the peel of air in between. And now we can superimpose. As you can see, the inner edge of this stripe is too wide. We can fix it by adding elastic to it. Simply select the edge of the pattern piece and check Elastic in the property editor. Simulate to see the difference. Now we can copy this stripe, shorten it and sew these two stripes together. Normal map intensity 0. Superimpose, simulate. I think that this stripe is actually too big for its place, so I prefer to make it shorter. Simulate and check again. It makes sense to make it smaller in the height too. And we repeat this process once again. Copy, shorten, sew together, intensity 0, superimpose side, Simulate and keep adjusting the size of these stripes and simulate in between until you're happy with your results.
finally, the last stripe. At first, we do the same. Copy, make it smaller, sew it to the other stripe, intensity zero. To close the hole in the center, we can sew the inner edge of this pattern piece together. To do it, we need a point in the center of this edge. At point, shortcut X, right click, uniform split. Now we can sew these two segments together so that they meet in the center. Superimpose side and simulate. We can additionally adjust how the straw match on the seams using the tool Edit Texture. I will keep adjusting the size of the stripes. As an option, we can uncheck elastic for this age. And here again, I prefer to change particle distance to 5 and mesh type to quad. And the same goes for the sides of the head. Now we can select all pattern pieces and apply additional thickness rendering. For this straw head, I would use 2 mm and for the trim, 1 mm. As you can see, the head looks a bit more realistic. Now we can also check that the seams does not have intensity for normal map, because actually there is nothing that is sewing. Now we can open the render window to see the render preview. Let's adjust the maps for the straw, starting with normal map. I think it would be nice to have it to the max. And displacement map, I would put amount something like one millimeter, just a bit, and particle distance to one. Make sure that your render preview is updated. And here, as you can see, the individual straw has a bit more volume. Now I feel like the whole straw is a bit too thick, so I would like to reduce additional thickness rendering of the straw pattern pieces and change it to one. Then I update my render preview again. If we are happy with the design, we can close the render window and save this head as a project or as a garment. Maybe you are done with the head, but maybe you want to use it further for styling. So in my case, I want this avatar to wear my new hat. I go to library, right click on the head, add to workspace. Here I hide it pins, so the head looks quite normal without pins. And with the help of Gizmo, I'm arranging my head on the top of the head. For this, it's really nice to use Gizmo with words coordinate. And we are done. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for more tutorials.